And so I'm in this process. I'm trying to change the way we build houses here okay. in Australia. But I'm, I'm not a builder. I'm not an architect. People would say, so are you an architect? And I'd say, mm, nah, no, I just decided that the way we build houses here are shit. So I thought I'd do something about it. Uh, and, um, and then I realized that, so I work as a handyman. That's how I, I pay the bills. The housing project is an obsession. It doesn't actually make me any money. Okay. And, but I was always suffering this imposter syndrome. And then I realized in the last six years, I have been in 800 to 1,000 houses. So I have decided, I have bestowed upon myself an honorary doctor degree in houseology <laughs> because I know more about how not to do housing, having been in 800 to 1,000 mm. houses in the last six years. I know more about how not to do housing than anybody in the free world. So it's like, okay, I can talk. I am now an expert. I have a degree. I have a doctorate, which I declared myself. So, you know, people say, oh, where'd you get your doctorate degree? I said, well, I just gave it to myself. You know? <laughs> well, okay. So you've been in 800 to 1,000 homes. What are the main things that people shouldn't be doing in terms of building their houses to make them more sustainable or in just in general, like what are the well, do nots? So yeah, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. People talk about sustainability. We've been talking about sustainability since the 1970s. You know, the hippies, my parents, they were hippies and they talked about sustainability and living better on the planet. Nobody gives a shit. So people have not changed the way they've done things substantially. Mm. in all this time. So I'm like, let's stop talking about sustainability. What we should be doing, which we have known how to do since the 1970s, is build our houses so that they're warm in the winter, and they're cool in the summer, and they basically, if a well-designed house wouldn't require, or we require minimal amounts of energy to keep it comfortable throughout the life of the home. Mm -hmm. So that's not only, yeah, it's good for the planet because you're not burning oil or natural gas or whatever, but also you're living, you know, the average Australian spends 1500 to $2,000 a year on energy costs. It would obviously be much higher in colder parts of North America, but we could build our houses so they don't actually need, or they need minimal amounts of energy. Yeah, if you're in Canada, you're probably going to need some heating in there when it's 50 below outside, but you can build a house. So all of the heat that you are producing isn't going out. And then even in cold parts of the world, the sun comes out a couple of, you know, for long periods of time during the day and you can bring that heat in and warm up your house with the heat from the sun rather than, you know, spending money. Okay, I'm I'm clueless when it comes to this. All I know is kind of like, okay, solar powers, blah, blah, blah. I kind of understand that. So is it possible, for example, that you could collect all of that kind of heat power in the, um, in the summer, right? And then, I don't know, save that for the winter? Is that something that can be, can not, happen? No, not really. Okay. You know, it, <laughs> it, but it, what it is, is... You know, the average, like if you look at the temperature through the day mm -hmm. of, you know, it's like doing this, it gets, you know, much hotter in the middle of the day, and then it drops down, and then it comes back up again the next day. And what a well designed house will be, is it just kind of does these little waves. So it, it gets a little bit warmer during the day, and it cools down a little bit at night. And that's, you know, Housing accounts for somewhere between 40 and 60% of global carbon emissions. So, you know, Damn. making a change on this is big. But, you know, if we're trying to sell people on it's good for the planet, well, that hasn't worked in the last 50 years. So it's not likely to change right now. But your kids are less likely to get asthma. Your 
less likely to develop respiratory diseases because you don't have mold and mildew in your house. You know, gas heating produces a lot of moisture when you're burning the gas and that moisture builds up in your house and produces mold and mildew. That's, you know, and, and that then becomes really toxic, you know, the molds, molds, mildews, whatever in your house. So what I keep saying to people is climate change is a marketing problem. It's not a technical problem. We know how to solve it, but we've done a, sorry, I have to do this again. We've done a shithouse job of marketing it and we have to change it. We have to talk about things in terms of how good it is. 